Welcome to an introductory video on game theory. Um, we'll be looking, of course, at normal form games. Uh, we'll have a brief overview of two player static games uh, and a general uh, matrix form for that. We'll have a brief overview of the prisoner's dilemma and then we'll look at how to solve games using dominance. Now, of course, decision analysis. Uh, will often depend on decisions made by other people, not just yourself. So these decision problems, we refer to them as games. Uh, the people in these games who make the decisions are called players. So it's all quite straightforward so far. So let's consider a two-player static game. So, in a two-player static game, obviously, we need to consider two players, so two people making decisions. And we assume that each of them have a set of strategies. So player 1 um, has a strategy set S1 uh, with the following strategies R1, R2, all the way through to Rm. So he has M available strategies and similarly player 2 has S1 all the way through to S, N available strategies. Uh, we refer to U1 for R and S and U2 on RS. Uh, we refer to these as the utilities. for each pair of strategies. All this means is that for every different strategy that player 1 and player 2 chooses, there's going to be a different outcome. Obviously that, these outcomes will depend uh, on the, the pairing that's chosen. So R1 and S7, for example, will give a certain utility. So now we're going to illustrate uh, this game by drawing what's known as a matrix. And we'll call it a general matrix because we're going to sort of draw the general form. So we'll call it a general form matrix because we're not going to put any numbers into it. So for a general form matrix, we're going to have player one strategies down here, R1, R2, all the way through to Rm, uh, and then we'll have player two up here, S1, S2, all the way through to Sn, and of course for each pairing of strategies we'll have a different utility. And of course, we fill in the table like this, and I'll fast forward it for you. So there's our general form matrix. Um, obviously, both players will want to maximize their values for both U1 and U2. Um, quite how they maximize these values and how they come to make these decisions 
is basically what game theory is all about. Um, I'm going to give you a quick example of something known as the prisoner's dilemma. Okay, so in the prisoner's dilemma, we have two suspects who have been arrested and importantly they are being questioned separately. So they're not allowed to um, sort of liaise with each other. So if one confesses and the other one doesn't, he, well the other guy, will get five years. If they both confess, they both get four years. And if neither of them confess, so they both remain silent, they both get two years. So how do we decide which is the best um, option for the suspects to remain quiet or to confess? So we draw ourselves a matrix. Okay, so we have, of course, two options here. Uh, so we're going to consider prisoner one, who can be quiet or confess, and prisoner two by here, who has the same choice. And we will fill in the matrix. So the basic outline of the prisoner's dilemma, prisoner 1 here, we'll call him P1, if he's quiet and the other fellow's quiet, they both get two years. However, if he's quiet and the other guy confesses to it, the other guy is actually let off and prisoner 1 here gets five years. Now, if prisoner 1 um, chooses to confess, he and the other guy stays quiet, then he'll actually get let off. And if they both confess, well, they both get four years. Um, so we have a choice here between minus four and zero, and minus five and minus two. And clearly the choice is to confess. Uh, this is because the dangers of keeping quiet, you know, sent to prison for five years. So C is always better than Q, and the solution will be CC. So, uh, however, we're going to introduce another way of finding the best solution to um, to a game, and that is solving games using dominance. So in a game with two players, a strategy for player one for player one, uh, and we'll call this strategy RI, we say that it is strictly dominated Uh, by another strategy of his, we'll call that RJ, if the following is true. So RI is strictly dominated by RJ if for this utility RI is less 
than RJ for every every S in uh, set 2. And we can say similarly that a strategy for player 1 Ri is weakly dominated by Rj if we have Ri is less than or equal to some RJ here for all S. And importantly, also less that's meant to be an L S L. Okay, so basically what we have here, strict dominance, is when Rj is greater than Ri in every case of S. So in every um, situation where you can compare Rj and Ri. However, if we have um, an equality, um, but we still have some value for which Rj is greater than Ri, then we have it weakly dominated. I think with this um, dominance, the best thing to do is see a, an actual visual example. So let's finish off by looking at a quick example. Um, we'll have two strategies, R1 and R2. And I think we'll have probably two strategies, S1 and S2. And we'll say that this yields 4-4. Four, four. This yields 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we've got 3, 2 here, and we can have 3, 2 by here. Apologies for that, my video appears to have cut out. So, to reiterate, how do we find um, which dominates which for each player? So, we have player 1 and his strategies here. So, let's consider player 1. Um, so, for value uh, strategy R1 here, uh, we have 4 for S1 and we have 3 for S2. Uh, now 4 at S1 is larger than 3 at S1 and 3 at S2 is equal to 3 at S2. So we have larger than here, so we have 4 is larger than 3, but here 3 is greater than or equal to, equal being the uh, the part we're interested in here, uh, 3 here, and if you remember that is weak dominance, so R1, which is here, weakly dominates R2 for player 1, and similarly we are interested in player 2 up here, um, so for strategy 1 of player 2 we have uh, 4 and 2, so at R1 here, 4 is greater than 3, and at R2, 2 is equal to 2. So um, like this here, we have a weak dominance for S1. So S1 weakly dominates S2 for player 2. Uh, this can be quite difficult to get your head around. Um, I believe the way I've just explained it is probably the, um, the best way to explain it. Um, any comments please leave below and I'll do my best to answer them in the comment section and um, possibly with another video as well. Thank you for watching.